things later. So it's been a lot of talking in general, but I think once you see how to solve one of these guys for real, you'll realize how incredibly simple it is. So let's pick a very simple differential equation. Uh, x double prime minus 5x is equal to 0. Now I call this, and we're at, what we're trying to find is x of t. x is a function of time. So when we say x double prime, we're really saying dx dt, or, or second derivative of x with respect to time, minus 5 times x is equal to 0. So this is a second order differential equation. And we would like to figure out how to be able to solve it. So the first thing we do is we notice it is homogeneous because everything on the right-hand side is 0. On the left-hand side, we've got a second derivative right here. We have no derivative here. This is just an x. But every number in front of all of the relevant terms is just a constant. In other words, we don't see a t squared or a t cubed or a t to the fourth out in front anywhere. We've just got, because that would be our independent variable, we've just got numbers. So it's linear. It's homogeneous. It's constant coefficients. We are go to use this solution method. So the first thing we do is we rewrite it in operator no, uh, notation. So we learned how to do that a few sections ago. Basically, the second derivative becomes a d squared minus 5. We wrap it in parentheses. It's operating on some function x of t, and we make it equal to 0. You should be able to convince yourself that this is equivalent operator notation from what we have up here because if you multiply the x in here, then d squared would be operating on x, and that would give us a second derivative because d squared is a second derivative. Minus 5, if you distribute in, 5x is what we have here, equals 0. So it's nothing more than, than just basically uh, pulling it out and arranging it like that. The third step is to create this characteristic polynomial. So this is d squared minus 5. This is what we're interested in. This is sort of the relevant part that defines the differential equation. This is the linear differential operator operating on this function x that we don't know what it is, x of t. right? So we come down here and we create a polynomial like this. r squared minus 5 equals 0. So all we do is take the linear operator that we have, replace d with r, literally that's all we're doing, and then we set it equal to 0. All right, so this is a polynomial that we can easily solve. So how do we solve for r? We say r squared is equal to 5, just move it over, and we say r is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5. So we have found the roots of this characteristic polynomial. So you see we're marching down. Here is our original differential equation. We've constructed our characteristic polynomial. We have found the roots. We're just calling them lambda in this labeling here. The next step is to try to construct solutions. And we said we construct the solutions as follows, e to the lambda t. So every root that we have, we just stick it in here. If you don't have any multiplicity of roots, you don't have to worry about, about what we talked about here with the multiplicity. So we look at this and we say plus or minus square root of 5. There's no multiplicity there. Plus the square root of 5 is a totally different root than negative square root of 5. It's a totally different number, right? So we don't need to worry about that. So we just go straight to the solution phase. x of t, which is the original function that we were trying to find, is going to be equal to constant 1 times e to the square root of 5t plus c2, which is just some other constant, e to the negative square root of 5 times t. Now the square root operates on the 5, the t is out to the side. So all we did, literally, was we said, okay, root 1 is positive square root of 5. So we write it as e to the square root of 5t. We have to have a constant out in front. And we have plus another constant, e to the minus square root of 5t. And that, my friends, is the complete solution. So that's what we're doing when we say at the bottom, the general solution which is the whole solution, is the linear combination. When I say linear combination, this is what we're doing. We're adding them together with constants out in front. Of course, the constants aren't defined. We don't know what the constants are. The reason we don't know is because we don't have any initial conditions, right? If we had some initial conditions over here to tell us how the system started, then we could go and figure those guys out, find what these constants are, just like we've done for other problems. At this point, it just becomes an exercise in what we've already know, know how to do to find these constants. And uh, we go from there. We'll solve a few initial value problems later on, but um, you know, for now, there's really no need to, to go about that because the most important thing is for you to understand how this method works. Now, you see how incredibly easy this is. Look how many lines you have here. I mean, really, you're just solving a simple polynomial, and, and boom, you're constructing the answer. 
Now I will say that this, this entire method works for basically any order differential equation. Second order, third order, fourth order, fifth order, first order, 19th order. It doesn't really matter as long as it's constant coefficients and homogeneous. Um, and notice also that in our definition, for each real root lambda, construct your solutions as follows. So this is a real root, right? Real number just means it's not imaginary. That's all that means. So square root of 5 is a number just like 2 is a number. That's not imaginary. So when you get your, when you get your polynomial and you find your, your roots of it, when you have real numbers, which all of these are real numbers, you construct your solution like this. If you ever get an imaginary root of your polynomial, which can happen, right? Then the next section after this one, or the next solution technique after this one, uh, when we're going to have ima imaginary uh, roots of this guy, I'll tell you how to construct those solutions for the imaginary roots. So that's why I said the title of this, this section was complicated. It's, you know, constant coefficients, real roots. Well, that's where the real roots comes from. The real roots means that this polynomial has real roots. This is how you construct that solution. If you have an imaginary root or a complex root, we'll teach you how to, how to construct those in another section because it's not very hard. It's just cluttered if you try to present it all at one time.